Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and I'd like to say grace and peace to my brothers in Born Again Israelites and Risen with Christ Ministry. My brothers Karalazar and my brother Beloved. Grace and peace, my brothers, and grace and peace to all my brothers and sisters that love the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, today's topic is Jesus Calms a Storm. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23 to 27. And I will read. And when he was entering into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and so much that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye, little, o, o ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds of the sea obey him? <coughs> now that was in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23 and 27. Now we're going to have a discussion based on this scripture right here. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23 to 27. So Christ, now Christ has given sailing orders to his disciples. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 18. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 18. For Capernaum was situated upon the lake of Tiberias that they should up depart to the other side of the sea of Tiberias into the country of Gad Gadara and the tribe of Gad which lay east of Jordan there Christ would go to rescue a poor, a poor creature that was possessed with a legion of devils though Christ foresaw how he should be affronted there Christ chose to go by water it had not been much about if Christ had gone by land, but Christ chose to cross the lake that Christ might have occasion to manifest himself, the God of the sea, as well as the God of the dry land, and to show that all power is Christ, both in heaven and in earth. It is a confront to those who go down to the sea in ships and are often in perils there to reflect that they have a savior to trust him and pray to whom knows what it is to be at sea and to be in a storm there we observe when christ went to sea christ didn't have a yacht or pleasure or pleasure boat to attend him but made use of his disciples fishing boat so poorly was christ accommodated in all respects christ's disciples swallowed christ the twelve kept close to christ when others stayed behind, where there was sure footing, they and they only will be found the true disciples of Christ, the ones that follow Christ and are willing to go through the disturbing, the, the storms and uh, the devastating moments that that's going to bring you in while you're following Christ. That are willing to go to the sea with Christ to follow Christ into dangers and difficulties many would be content to go the land the land way to heaven that will rather stand still so in other words another people would rather go the smooth way to go to heaven as opposed to running into the difficulties the afflictions and the uh, persecution and the, the, the hard the, the hard times that you're gonna go through while you follow in Christ they want to go the easy route Or, go, or they will go back then, then venture upon a dangerous sea but those that would rest with Christ hereafter must follow Christ now wherever Christ leads them into a ship or into a prison as well as into a palace because they'll be quick to go into a palace but when it's time to go to the danger zone they don't want to take that challenge that chance now we observe here the peril of and perplexity of the disciples in this voyage and in the appeared 
and this appeared the truth of what Christ had just now said that those who follow Christ must count upon difficulties. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 20. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Literally, shades made with limbs, meaning that Christ had to sleep in the garden under the trees. There arose a very great storm. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 24. And behold, there arose a great tempest of the, in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 24. Christ could have prevented this storm and have ordered them a pleasant passage, but that would not have been so much for his glory and the confirmation of their faith as their deliverance was. This storm was for their own sake. So in other words, when you go through storm and trial and tribulations here in your walk of life, the storms, it is done to try your, your faith, to try your faith, to see if you are willing to deal with that and without complaining and murmuring to God about why is this happening to me. He wants you to be patient and understanding with the storm and show that you have faith that he's going to lead you out of that storm. He's going to walk you out of that storm with the, with the love and grace of his mercy. This is what the whole doctrine is all about. Now we're going to go in the book of John chapter 11 verse 4. When Jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. That's in the book of John chapter 11 verse 4. One would have expected that having Christ with them they should have had a very favorable goal but it is quite otherwise for Christ would show that they would who are passing with Christ over the oceans of this world to the other side must expect storms by the way the church is tossed with tempests we're going to go in the book of Isaiah chapter 54 verse 11 to confirm that O thou afflicted tossed with tempests and not confronted behold I will lay thy stones with fear colors with fair colors and lay thy foundation with sapphires that's in the book of isaiah mm -hmm. chapter 54 verse 11 but this he declared the excellent estate of the church under christ it is only the upper region of christ that enjoys the per per perpetual calm this lower one is ever and so disturbed and dis disturbing Jesus Christ was asleep in this storm. We never read of Christ sleeping, but at this time he was in watching often and continued all night in prayer to God. This was a sleep not of security like Jonah in a storm, but of holy sincerity and dependence upon his father. Christ sleep slept to show that Christ was really and truly man and subject to the sinless infirmities of our nature Christ's work made Christ weary and sleepy and Christ had no guilt no fear within to disturb Christ's repose those that can lay their heads upon the pillow of a clear conscience may sleep quietly and sweetly in the storm we're going to go on the book of Psalms chapter 4 verse 8 I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for though Lord only makes me dwell in safety that's in the book of Psalm, chapter 48, verse, I'm sorry, chapter, Psalms, chapter 4, verse 8. This word in Hebrew may be referred to God as it is here translated or to David signifies that he should dwell as joyfully alone as if he had many about him because the Lord is with him. We're going to go in the book of Peter, chapter, I'm sorry, we're going to go in the book of Peter as Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. That's in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 6. Christ slept at this time to try the faith of his disciples, whether they could trust Christ when Christ seemed to slight them. Christ slept not so much with a desire to be refreshed as with a desire to be awakened. The poor disciples thought used to deceive. 
were in a great fright and in their fear came to their master. We're going to go on the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 25. And his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We perish. We perish. That's in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 25. Where else should they go? It was well they had Christ to near, Christ so near them. They awoke Christ with their prayers. Lord, save us. We perish. They would they they who would lean who would learn to pray must go to sea, ready to take place and sensible dangers will drive people to Christ who alone can help in time of need. Their prayers as has life in it. Lord save us, we perish. Their petitions is Lord save us. They believe Christ could save them. They beg Christ would Christ errand into the world was to save but those only shall be saved that call on the name of the Lord we're going to go in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 22 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved that's in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 21 the most important use of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to bring men to salvation by faith now these words call on signifies in holy scriptures and earnest praying and craving to for help from god's hands they who by faith are interested in the eternal salvation wrought out by christ may with a humble confidence apply themselves to christ for temp for temporal deliverance they call christ lord and then pray save us christ will save none but those that are willing to take christ for their lord for Christ is a prince and a savior. Their plea is, we perish, which was the language of their fear. They looked upon their case as desperate and gave up all for loss. They had received a sentence of death within themselves. And this they plead, we perish. If thou do it, not save us, look upon us, therefore, with pity. It was the language of their intensity they pray as men in earnest they, that beg for their lives. It becomes us to strive and wrestle in prayer. Therefore, Christ slept that Christ might draw out this begging. The power and grace of Jesus Christ put forth for their help. Then the Lord Jesus awakened as one refreshed. We're going to go on the book of Psalm chapter 78 verse 65. Then the Lord awaked as one out of a sleep and like a mighty man that shouted by reason of wine. That's in the book of Psalm chapter 78 verse 65. Because they were drunk in their sins, they, they, they judged God's patience to be slumber, slumbering as though he was drunk. Therefore, he answered their beastly judgment saying, he will wake and take sudden vengeance. Now Christ may sleep when Christ's church is in a storm, but Christ will not outsleep himself. The time, the, the set time to favor Christ's distressed church will come. We're going to go on the book of Psalm, chapter 102, verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 102, verse 13. That is the 70 years which by the prophet Jeremiah you appointed we're going to go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12 then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you he, he rebuked the disciples he, that was in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 I'm sorry the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12 and then shall ye Call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. That's in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 12. He rebuked the disciples. Book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 26. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the seas, and there was a great calm. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 26. Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. Christ does not scold them for disturbing him with their prayers, but for disrupting but for disrupting themselves with their fears. Christ reproved 
them first and then deliver them. This is Christ's method to prepare us for a mercy and to think to give it to us. Christ dislikes of their fears. Why are ye fearful? Ye, may, ye my disciples, let the sinners in Zion be afraid. Let heathens, mar mariners, tremble in the storm. But you shall not be so. Inquire into the reason of your fears and weigh them. Christ's discoveries of that the cause and spring of their fears, O ye of little faith. Many that have true faith are weak in it, and it does but little. We go, Christ's disciples are apt to be disquiet with fears in a stormy day, to torment themselves with jealousies that things are bad with them, and the small conclusion that they will be worse. The prevalence of our indoor in inordinate fears in a stormy day is owing to the weakness of our faith, which would be as an anchor to the soul and would ply the oar of prayer. By faith we might see through the storm to the quiet shore and encourage ourselves with hope that we shall weather our point. The fearlessness of Christ's disciples in a storm and their unbelief in a storm and their unbelief in, in the cause of it are very displeasing to the Lord Jesus. For they reflect dishonor upon Christ and, cre and create disturbance to themselves. Christ rebukes the wind. The former, the former Christ did as the God of grace and the servant of the heart who can do what he please in us this Christ did as the God of nature the servant of the world who can do what he please for us it is the same power that stills the noise of the sea and the tumult of fear we're gonna go on the book of Psalm chapter 65 verse 7 which stilleth the noise of the sea the noise of their waves and the tumult, tumult of the people that's in the book of Psalms, chapter 65, verse 7. He shows that there is no part of creature in the world which is not governed by God's power and providence. How easily is how easily this was done with word speaking. Moses commanded the waters with rod, Joshua with, with the ark of the covenant, Elijah with the prophet, mentor by, by Christ with the word. Moses commanded the waters with a rod. Joshua with the with the ark of the covenant. Elijah with the prophet's mantle, but Christ with a word. Christ's absolute dominion over all the creatures which bespeaks both Christ's honor and the happiness of those that have Christ on their side. How effectually it was it was done. There was a great calm all of the sudden. Ordinary, ordinarily, after a storm, there is such a fret of the water that it is a good while before they can settle. But if Christ speaks the word, not only the storm cease, but all the effects of it, all the remains of it, great storms of doubt and fears in the soul under the power of the spirit of bondage, sometimes end in a wonderful calm created and spoken by the spirit of adoption. This exited this excited their astonishment in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 27 but the men marveled saying what manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him. That's in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 27. The men marveled they had been long acquainted with the sea and never saw a storm so immediately turn into a perfect calm. In all their lives, it has all the marks and signatures of a miracle upon it. It is the Lord's doing and his marvelous in, our, in their eyes. Their ad, ad, admiration of Christ, what manner of man is this? Christ is a non such everything and Christ is adorable. None so wise, so mighty, so amiable as Christ.
the reason of it, even the winds and the sea obey Christ. Upon this account, Christ is to be admired. That Christ has commanding power even over water, over winds and seas. Other pretended to cure diseases, but Christ only undertook to command the winds. We know not the way of the wind. We're going to go in the book of John to get confirmation or we know or not the way of the wind. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it list, and thou heareth the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it comes and whence whether it goes. So, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. That's in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 8. With free and wandering blast, as it wishes, much less can be controlled. It, but he that bringeth forth the wind out of his treasury. That we're gonna go on the book of Psalm, chapter 135, verse 7. He causeth the vapors to ascend from the end of the of the earth. He maketh lightning for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 135, verse 7. When it is out gathered it into his pit in, into his fist. We're gonna go on the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 4. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou can't can tell. That's in the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 4. Meaning to know the secrets of God and God's son, Jesus Christ, as though he would say none. Christ that can do do this can do anything can do enough to encourage our confidence and comfort in Christ in the most stormy days within or without we're going to go in the book of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 4 trust ye in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength that's in the book of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 4 the Lord sits upon the floods and is mightier than the noise of many waters. Christ, by commanding the sea, showed himself to be the same that made the world when at Christ's rebuke the waters fled. We're going to go on the book of Psalm, chapter 104, verse 7 and 8. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of the thunder, thy thunder they haste away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. That's in the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 7 and 8. Now, as now, at Christ rebukes, they fell. In Christ Jesus' name, may God be the glory. As I walk, live, and pray in your image and likeness, the fruit of the Spirit, I come in love and leave in peace. Grace and peace and much love and blessings to you and your family. Have a blessed day to all the saints, my brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.